Nuclear power is uh, in the news a fair amount these days, and it's often tied to climate change, and we need clean power. But I don't think most people understand just how much we need of it. I've been doing some work in BC on electrification of the economy tied to uh, uh, Clean BC, the provincial climate plan, and it could be doubling, tripling, maybe even quadrupling BC power generation by 2050. Where's that electricity gonna come from? Well, John Gorman from the Canadian Nuclear Association uh, is here to talk about that and a poll that Abacus Data uh, completed for his association uh, earlier this month. So welcome to the interview, John. Thank you very much, Mark. I'm pleased to be here. Now, the, there's an overwhelming consensus in Canada, 75, 80, 85% of people who are very concerned about climate change. So I think we're, we've reached the consensus point where we have to do something question is what, and if we're going to electrify things, we need power, why should it be nuclear power? Well, that's a, that's a great question, and, and let's add a little bit uh, more uh, context there, uh, Mark. And, you know, Canada's in a pretty fortunate position in the, the sense that our existing electricity system is about 81% uh, non-emitting, uh, which means we've got a, a very clean electricity system to, to begin with, and that's in thanks large part to hydro, but nuclear uh, for the last uh, 60 years or so has been providing about 17% of that electricity uh, in Canada, that clean electricity. Um, and in the Ontario context, about two thirds of our electricity for the last uh, number of years. Uh, so you can see that uh, between water and hydro, we're starting with a good, a good asset that we should be using to reach our targets. But to your point, um, the issue here really is that when you look at our overall energy needs, electricity is only meeting about 20% of those needs, and 80% of our energy needs are met by fossil fuels and um, uh, forms of energy that actually emit uh, uh, you know, uh, carbon dioxide and other pollutants. So the challenge is bigger than just having a clean electricity system. Uh, when you talk about the need to triple or quadruple how much clean electricity we have in Canada as we go towards 2050, that really means that we have to electrify large segments of our uh, economy, uh, transportation, uh, large industrial use, uh, buildings, um, those sort of processes. Electricity is going to be needed for those things, but some of those sectors are pretty hard to tackle. Yeah, and... Um you know, the situation in California raises the issue of base power load uh, to off or to uh, assist with the integration of renewables into a power grid. And of course, nuclear is uh, big, would be a big part of that is considered base load. Uh, I think what, what's on everybody's mind, though, uh, two things. Uh, one is cost, because uh, nuclear is considered to be quite a bit more costly than wind and solar. And the second is safety. Right. So um, I'm, these days, uh, we're tending to look at the nuclear sector and its contribution in a couple of different buckets. Uh, one is the conventional plants, uh, like the ones we have in Ontario and New Brunswick, uh, larger uh, units that provide vast amounts of, uh, of electricity. The ones in Ontario are being refurbished right now at a cost that is about a third lower than the cost of electricity in, in Ontario. So very, very cost effective to be refurbishing plants. But the really exciting development lately um, has been around small modular reactors and the ability of these very scalable uh, reactors to fit into different uh, un unconventional types of applications. So for example, um, using a small modular reactor to decarbonize the way that we extract oil and gas or to couple it with a mining uh, operation or to place it in um, an indigenous northern community or to do a smaller one that's attached to an electricity system in a, in a city. So these new small modular reactors, they're sort of like personal computers. If you want to think of conventional being a mainframe computer, these, these distributed smaller units uh, have a lot of benefits to them that can really act as base power, base load power that you were mentioning, Markham, and at the same time be a great complement to things like uh, wind and hydro, which are intermittent sources. So very exciting developments. Now, what about safety? Because that's on everybody's mind. I'm a child of the 70s. I remember my first year in university, the, you know, the, the protests against uh, cruise missiles nuclear, and nuclear weapons, that sort of thing. You know, a lot of people still feel that way. 
Sure. I, I, you know, the, the, the nuclear industry has been subject to a, a lot of uh, a lot of speculation and then hyperbole. There's a stigma attached to it, which the industry is really trying to tackle. But, you know, uh, Canada has an incredible uh, record in terms of the safe operation of, of nuclear power plants. 60 years of operation uh, with a flawless uh, record uh, globally, very well respected. And a series of skills that we're bringing to this new generation of uh, technologies with the small modular yeah. reactors, which have really enhanced uh, safety features built into them. What about disposal of the waste? This will be the last question, uh, John, but uh, we're really that, that has, uh, I think, bedeviled the, the industry from its very origins. But what do you do with the waste? Right. Well, this is the this is the question that uh, that everybody uh, le that everybody wants to uh, speak about. It's uh, the thing that's top of mind. But let's let's um, and, and I'm going to address that, uh, Martin. But but let's put this in context. It's important for people to understand that uranium is much more energy dense than any other fuel source. So, for example, about a million times more energy dense than coal fired generation or coal is. And the reason I bring that up is because it means that the amount of waste that is actually produced uh, is, is uh, almost insignificant compared to other types of energy um, sources. So in Ontario, for example, where nuclear has been providing two thirds of Ontario's electricity for the last 60 years, uh, it would be hard to fill up uh, more than three or four uh, hockey rinks to the floorboards. So imagine that kind of power density. There's a very little waste that's produced. So that's that's a first and important point. The, this, the other thing to note here is that you know in, in 60 years in Canada of managing waste, no one has ever been uh, hurt or injured, let alone uh, killed. Um, you know by radioactive waste, it's stored and managed uh, very very safely. And uh, we're in the process now of working on a permanent storage solution for that. I, I know in earlier programs some of your uh, speakers have talked about this, the deep geological uh, reserves. And I think it's important to mention that not only will this be a permanent solution, but the nuclear industry is the only industry that has prepaid uh, for what its uh, ultimate solutions is. And it's the only uh, energy source and industry that actually accounts for every bit of waste that it produces. So Every form of energy produces waste, but in the, form, in the, in the case of nuclear, uh, we capture, manage, store that, uh, and prepay for that to be done in a, in a safe and responsible manner. Well, John, I look forward to talking, talking to you in the future because I think this is an issue, the waste uh, management, that needs to be parsed. We need to get into some of the technical uh, issues that we can't talk about today. We don't have time. Uh, so I'll look forward to chatting with you in the future. Thank you very much.